Ah, oh, good morning. So it's a lovely, cold, icy day here in the middle of winter in the UK. So <laughs> what a great morning to show you how to um, make a starter from scratch. So this is a sourdough starter from scratch, just using flour and water and catching the natural microbes in the atmosphere to give you um, a beautiful bubbly starter. So I guess there's kind of three parts to making a starter. First part is um, the capture process where you're trying to trap what's in the atmosphere, the kind of the microbes that, that are out there. And next is like to cultivate that. Once you've got it going, to cultivate it into kind of amplify it until you've got a really good bubbly starter. Doing that a couple of times until you're going to get rid of the bad bacterias, grow the good ones. And then once you've gone through that process, then the third part is, the, is to maintain your starter going forward. So I'll get going now on day one here, you know, day one. And I'm now going to kind of show you the process of how to get started. So I'm going to use a, a bowl like this initially. This, the idea of this is to kind of give it a nice surface area here. So you get lots of activity going on between the flower and the atmosphere and the microbes out there. So or you could use a jar, but I think probably if you want to speed the process up, this is really great to use. And also it's a little bit kind of, it's got a more of a thermal mass to it. So that means that I can um, put it somewhere warmish and the heat will stay in this for a little while as well. So good benefits in here. So when you're getting started, a good one to start flower wise is a organic dark rye. This is from Shipton Mill. So this is the whole kernel. So it means you're getting everything that's in the in in the wheat, sorry, in the in the rye flour, in the rye um, kernel. So a lot more activity can go on then because you've got a lot more of the, of the good stuff in there rather than just the kind of the bleach white flour side of the side of the kernel. So we're going to use this there. That's great. So quantity wise, um, here you go. So I'm now going to put the hundred grams of rye flour in. You don't have to be too precise in this. You can kind of it's not going to matter too much in there. So when we get close, I'll stop. Okay, that's pretty good there. 97 grams of organic organic rye flour. So again, just say this is organic. So if you're going to go for rye flour, really go for organic. It's going to give you much better results. And now this is the messy bit here. I'm going to try and transfer the water. So 150 grams now of water into container here okay pretty close there so that makes you can see quite a kind of a, um, a wet mix and that's really what you want on here so allow lots of it so I just give that a stir up and just show you what happens to this now once it's stirred up what's the consistency like I'll give this a really good mix around so really quite wet and then Okay, that's great. So I'll just smooth that up the side there so it's nice and smooth and everything's in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave that for a day. Um, and I don't want to kind of leave it completely uncovered. So I'm going to kind of use something that's, that's going to allow some um, air to get through it and microbes to get through it. So I'm going to use this. This is kind of a hessian cloth that's used on Banaton. So if you want one of these, that's great. Cover it up so it's quite loose on there. And then put this in a place that's... Um, reasonably warm you know maybe if you've got a boiler somewhere put it close to it not too warm if you've got somewhere maybe but in your office by a computer that's quite warm or by your tv or if you've got if you're lucky enough to have a warm day then put it in a warm part of the house there right now it's quite cool so i'll find somewhere in the house where it's kind of in that range of like kind of 22 25 degrees somewhere around about there is great you know don't get to don't put on a really hot radiator otherwise you'll you'll kill the process so really Find somewhere warm but not too warm. And now I'll leave that and I'll come back. So this is day one. And I'll come back tomorrow and show you the next bit of the process. So that's great. Thank you for watching and um, grow. Right, this is now, um, well, now day two of the process. So we're still kind of in that process of capturing and trapping what's in, in naturally in the atmosphere to um, get into our, into our starter. So. What I'll do now, the next part of it really is to see what's happening from yesterday. So that's our sounder from this start from yesterday. Not probably a lot has happened in there over that time. Maybe some tiny bubbles in there, but not very much. So what we're going to do now is we're going to transfer half of that into a clean kiln jar. So this kind of size is great for getting your starter going. Give you room to 
fill up their own life expansion. So I'm going to put, I'm going to do this pretty roughly right here. I'm going to put roughly half of this in to the jar. I'm probably going to make a mess doing it because it's really hard not to. But if I can keep the sides clean, it's good just to show you what's going on. So that's probably around about half of it there now. So it's been kept somewhere relatively warm by the boiler for the last 24 hours. Then we do the same thing as we did yesterday. We're going to add in 150 grams of water. So we'll put that in first and then, then 100 grams of rye flour. So we'll just scale this up here. If I can see this in the light. Okay. Okay, that's zero. So 150 grams now of the water we've had sitting here. Again, we don't want to be too precise on this. We can be... Okay, that's pretty good in there. And now we're going to go through and put in then 50 grams of our organic dark rye flour. The mix. So here we go. Okay, well that's pretty good going, isn't it, on there? So I've got 50 grams now at the moment. It's a bit of a messy process, isn't it, really? Okay, I'll, I'll come back to you in half an hour once I've done this. It's, it takes a bit longer than I realise. Okay, there we go. So I've got 89 grams, so I'll, I'll carry on just to get to the, to the 100 from there. Okay, 97. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to, basically just going to stir that around, um, mix it all up. Let's get it in the way. And then we, tomorrow, you should start to see a little bit of activity tomorrow going on in here. Um, it's quite a wet mix again, it's kind of, it's like a very thick soup, I guess, like a thick pumpkin soup we've got in there. So that's great, that's kind of all mixed up, I think, from yesterday's mix and also from today's mix in there. So I'm just going to clean the sides down so we can just kind of see what's going on as this, hopefully as I say, We'll see some activity now. This is kind of day two of its capture phase of the process. And that's right, I'm going to put the, the lid on loosely here now. Don't need to put seal it up there, so still let some activity of air going through there and the kind of microbes in the atmosphere to do their job. So I don't think we're going to see much of a rise on here tomorrow. Probably just a little bit on here and a few bubbles coming in there. So then we're going to know we've got something going on there. So I think I'm going to leave that now somewhere warmish. Probably by the boiler again. It seems to do a good job. Come back tomorrow and finish off the process. Because this is day two. And I'll leave it there just to remind myself that we are on day two. And tomorrow we're going to go through the next stage of the process. So thanks for watching and I'll start again tomorrow. Well, this is day three. So a lot more activity in there than I ever expected. So this looks to me as though we've really got something going here and this starter needs to go on to the next stage. So what I'm going to do, to stop it from, um, from an even bigger volcano, to see the bubbles in here, it's looking really, really good. So on day three, I thought this would be day four, so it's way ahead of where I thought it would be. Um, so I'm actually going to take some off of here now, maybe remove about half of this and then leave it in the jar. Now at the end of day three, as you can see, it's really aerated, it's beautiful. I mean, this probably is almost ready to go really actually, but we're going to do, do another set of um, kind of stretches on this and kind of get it going, build up even more. So the plan now is to half the amount in the jar. If I can get the lid off, there you go. Just give it a little bit of a test here. As you 
see it's great flooding on top that means great aeration in there um, you know that, that's that's a really very active starter so happy that's um, floating away on there let's take that out and so as I say now we're gonna just half what's in the jar roughly so I put a marker on here with the um, elastic band just to kind of make a little mess here just to show kind of roughly where half of it was I mean I'm going to be too exact here but I'd say it's roughly about half of what was in there earlier on so there we go about half so I'm now going to add into that um, 80 grams of water from our jug here there we go from that zero so 80 grams of water Okay, 81, that's good. And then we're gonna then add in 80 grams of our organic dark rye flour. And then mix it up. So I'm gonna about 116 for that. Okay, there we go. So that's 80 of water, 80 of flour. Now we can mix that up. I'm going to leave this again for another 24 hours and really, this is really going to help to build it up, you know, I mean, we've already got a good starter here, but once we go to this stage now of um, kind of running it through another cycle with fresh flour and water, it's going to really get those microbes jumping around, getting feeding and making an even stronger starter for us. So give it a really good stir so everything from the bottom kind of stirs around with the flour and water. I'm happy with that on there. Let's get one more big stir. And then basically just flat it down again on here. So you can then, what you can do then is out of interest at the moment, really, because it's going to vary how much activity you get. I'll just put the elastic band on there again just to kind of show roughly where we've kind of come from and where we're ending up. So let's so say this is day three here. So I'll just put this. Well, the end of day three, so 24 hours, and it's the last additions to the starter. So, there you go. So, I've just gone through and marked that on the, on the jar, and so we can see where we are for the next rise. So, again, leave that in the house for another 24 hours for day into day four and put it somewhere warmer. I'm happy now this is not actually going to go over the top of the jar like it did last time. We should be absolutely fine on that now because there's lots of headroom in there, but we should see lots of activity on that in the next um, 24 hours. So I'll leave that here now, it's nice and warm, and come back and um, carry on tomorrow and show you the next part of the process. So there we go, that's day three feeding, it's finished. Thank you. Well, here we go, this is day four. Um, incredible growth really for this starter. I'm expecting this to be really day six now at this stage, but we're at day four. So within four days, we've gone from flour and water to fantastic bubbly active starter ready to use. So here we go on here. I can just show you this without kind of tipping up too much there. Really fantastic, you know, I mean, that, that's, it's more than double in size, double in a bit, which is really what you want. Um, so now we've got a starter. We can, this is for life now. <laughs> this is a starter you can keep on using. And the stage right now is kind of the maintenance phase. This is where you've got to look after your starter on a daily basis, either well, feeding it daily or using the fridge to keep it going that way. So if you're going to, if you're going to keep it going each day, like you might say three, four loaves a week or somewhere around about there, you really want to kind of keep it, keep it going every day and maintain it properly because you don't want to lose your starter. So there we go. So we're going to show you now how to go into the, the maintenance stage here with the starter and what to do each day. So quite simple really. And here, so I've got a second jar. Just out of the way. We're going to take a small amount. So we're going to now take out from here 20 grams of starter. That's all we need from here. So if you've got friends and family who'd like a starter, now's the time to say, hey guys, I've got a starter ready to go. Come and have some of my starter. You can start making beautiful, delicious sourdough bread. So we're just going to zero this up on here. It's great, and I'm going to get roughly 20 grams out of starter. So just, just dig in here, 
Look at that, beautifully aerated, lovely and light. So let's see what we've got in there. Okay, a little bit more on there. Okay, 23, I'm happy that that's fine. So we're gonna again use our um, dark white organic flour. Like going forward, I would say this is a good staple, you know, he's uses a lot going forward, but also mix it up, you know, get some organic bread flour, some wholemeal flour, try things in there, because the, the greater the variety of flours you use in there, the difference and more different you're going to find you you're going to get different organisms coming into it and different growth stronger more robust more flavor so play around a bit with different flowers keep them organic if you can and use your organic dark rye in the majority if you're going to get good strength from it so here we go so that's the roughly 20 grams of starter in there so i'll add now to that 50 grams of water in there Okay, don't, don't, don't need to be exact on the money, but pretty close is, is good enough really there. And then the final bit here is to put in your, if you can very carefully without spilling it everywhere, put in 50 grams of your organic dark rye flour. And this jar here is, a, is about right that once you've, um, once it's completed, it's doubled and a bit more, it will hit the top of the jar. So this is really a good portion control really in here. I mean, but if you've got a bigger jar as well, no problem. This is just what I use um, on here. Also, it means like this is the size in here for 100 grams is what you're gonna get roughly in here plus a bit left over, is what you need really for making a loaf of bread. So this is a good portion control here really for me is that I use this size jar for that reason. So now we're gonna give it a stir around and get to it like a nice this this should be something like toothpaste you know kind of it's uh not runny anymore it's going to get to a consistency that's like as i'm sure you always use toothpaste so it's you're going to know what that's like consistency wise but you know it's those 20 grams of starter 50 grams of water 50 grams of your flour which in this case is is dark rye and then you're going to put this somewhere and it's going to kind of it will it's going to grow depending on the temperature. So if it's a really hot day, this may only take five hours to grow. Somewhere a bit cooler, it might take 20 hours. So really, you've got to kind of, you'll start to learn whereabouts in your house is good for storing your starter, depending on when you want to, to use it. So that's fantastic. So there you go. So I'm going to put this in, I can put the lid on, well, put the lid on here loosely. And... And that's it. So that's really the end of this series on making a startup from scratch. I'm really pleased it's gone so quickly. It's really great to see that you can, with this process that I developed, you can get a starter going from flour and water to a really bubbly active starter in four days and start baking. So I'll use this on my next life. Um, and I'm sure it's gonna be a great starter. So there you go, day four. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Please, any questions, please file them through on, um, on my channel and I'll answer the questions. Happy to do so. I really enjoy sharing this with other people. So great to get feedback and please subscribe to my channel, like it, and I'll keep on doing more of these because there are other variations around starters, what you can do. This is a really good fundamental one for getting started from day one to baking, basically. So Tomorrow I'll be able to bake a beautiful loaf of bread with this and get great results, I'm sure. From what I've seen from the activity in that starter, it's perfect, perfect to go. Well, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll hopefully you'll go away and start making your starter now. Thank you. This is day five. This is the completed um, starter, ready to go and bake a beautiful, delicious loaf of sourdough bread with. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe and please like the channel and I'll continue making videos to help people out. So there you go. So thanks again and um, see you next time.